Okay, what's up guys? My brother Kid here coming to you again. How's everybody doing out there? Uh, welcome back to my comic review as always. And um, first off, I want to give a this week's shout out goes to none other than an old friend of mine. Probably one of my few of my first subscribers on my main channel. Uh, Mr. Brendan Hex. Yes, giving a shout out to Hex. What's up Hex? Um, check out his channel. I'll leave it in the link as always. Uh, this is the man is one of the kings of CMVs. Uh, basically, that's comic movie videos. He puts up a lot of videos in terms of you know whether it's a story arc from from a famous series or it's just just anything like Babes of Comic and stuff like that. He does a very good job on that. Uh, right now he's he he's putting up a lot of the flashpoint stuff, so it's really been good. Um, another thing that I wanted to get out there, and also you'll find a link. A lot of people have been asking me, you know, on my this channel, and basically, hey Chris, you know, where'd you get those shirts from? Those are really nice. Where'd you get that shirt from? Especially this one that I'm wearing right now, as you can see. People are asking me where I got it. Um, so I will leave the link in the description. Anytime I wear any of my uh, you know, comic shirts or something like this, and you're interested, you want to know where I got it, I will leave the link in there. So if you feel like you want to purchase this or not, feel free. And I will leave the link where you can find this shirt at, okay? So, but other than that, you guys are here for the comics, right? And so I have 14 comics for you guys. And uh, to kick off... The first week, I believe, <laughs> of uh, April. Uh, I have a few from DC, a few from Marvel, and two from uh, Independence. And the first one we're going to kick off is none other than uh, Brandon Thomas's Voltron Year One. Uh, number one. So before Voltron, before Aris. They were called Space Explorer Squadron number 686. Sven was leading the group, Keith, you know, Pidge, Hunk, and all of them. Uh, Brendan Thomas does a really good job on this book. This basically explores the group before, you know, all everything that catches up to them piloting Voltron, what they were before, everything like that. Um... Sven actually comes, he basically starts to realize that he's having nightmares about, you know, certain things like missions going wrong. He fears that a mission is going to go wrong and things like that. Um, he also starts to talk about his squad, you know, Keith and Pidge and all of them about how good they are. He's talking about Keith is going to make a hell of a leader someday. It was really fun. It was, it was really fun. Um, they're, they're, they're after to save this, this diplomat. And, uh, unfortunately it ends bad for them there. Don't want to spoil too much, but let's just say their cover is blown. So, and it ends right there with a dun, dun, dun. Uh, but, uh, Brandon Thomas did a very good job. The artwork was really good. Uh, Dynamite does another good job with Voltron. Uh, but this is the year one book. The first issue, number one. Good stuff. All right. And moving on to Boom Studios, the only book that I'm collecting from Boom. Uh, Valen, The Outcast, uh, number five. Okay. So for all those who don't know who's new to my channel and don't know what's Valen, Valen right here, this guy right here, he was a king, and his his kingdom was attacked by Kurl Nung, the necromancer. And the necromancer killed him. He was this honorable king. He died in combat. But the bad guy, the necromancer, Kurlong Nung, actually stole his soul and made him into this undead husk creature as well. So, so he's going back to get his soul back. And that's what this, so that's what's going on now. So right now, uh, Valen and his group, uh, Zajana and everybody like that, are on their way north, further north to the kingdom of where the Necromancer is to get their soul. 
And this one has an Odyssey feel because they're passing through waters and they're facing um, sirens and things like that. It was really cool. Uh, Valen sees his dead wife. It was in the water. It, it, it was kind of crazy. Um, but it was fun. It was it was fun. It was just a lot of fun to see. And um, yeah, Val and the Outcast. Good stuff. All right. So that's all the, the uh, independent I got for you guys. Uh, every month I like to switch up how I deliver my lineup. So last month it was DC independent then Marvel this week this month is going to be independent Marvel DC so next up I give off the world's greatest superhero amazing spider-man <laughs> number uh, 683 this is the second part to ends of the earth uh, Scott uh, Dan Slott uh, Castellella uh, is the artist on this 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 was good this was really good Doc Ock is not playing. He is not playing. And if he's going to go out, he's going out swinging. Um, the downside of this, this felt, once again, not in a Spider-Man book. This felt like an Avengers book. That's my problem with this. This felt like a Spider uh, Avengers book, not the Avengers guest starring in Spider-Man. Uh, so, Spidey, Cap, and Thor come to the, the big, like, Earth Summit, and he's talking, and they come, and they're saying, like, you know, all the people around him, even Stephen Hawkins is there, which is really cool, the president, everybody's there, talking about if, is Doc Ock true about if his technology can save the ecosystem and everything like that? Spidey comes in and says, look, I know you're all saying, yeah, this and that, this is great, he can stop this, but... He's not going to, he's not doing this out of the goodness of his heart. He's got his own agenda. We all know he's got his own agenda. And I know him better than anybody. This guy is a sick, demented maniac. And a lot of people, then all of a sudden, Al Gore steps up and is like, well, you know what, I don't, and Spider-Man just says, wham, and just knocks him out. And it's like, oh, Spidey just hit Al Gore. And then he says, okay, you want more proof? Shit. Ripped off the mask, chameleons under there. And he's like, yeah, this is one of, see, basically showing you, yeah, that, you know, Doc Ock is not playing. And, you know, it was really funny. It was cool, but, yeah, it was it was funny. I thought that was really funny. Um, and then there's a big battle between the Sinister Six and the Avengers. And, unfortunately, that's my bro, people, Hulkland93. Um Check out his channel as always. <laughs> got to I got to plug my little bro. Um, he's basically Doc is the Avengers actually um, take get defeated by the Sinister Six. I was you got to give him credit. Doc did his homework, and you know everybody. I mean Thor gets kind of stabbed in the back by the Rhino uh, because the Rhino put on on his horn. Uh, Doc Ock put the the serpent, the Asgardian serpent teeth on his horn, so he stabs Thor in the back. Um, you know, Cap gets frozen by, you know, Sandman. There, there was a lot of things that goes on. And the last one standing is Spidey. And it, at the end of the book, it doesn't look well for Spidey and the gang. Um, but it was good, nonetheless. Like I said, it just felt like an Avengers book, not a... Spider-Man book guest starring the Avengers. Uh, but we're going to see how this Ends of the Earth plays out. So far, it's good to me. It's really good. Um, Dan Slott, as always, as my mentor, Blue Goblin always says, Dan Slott, no slouch at writing him Spidey. Good stuff. All right. So, yes, ladies and gentlemen, my YouTube family, Avengers vs. X-Men, round one. Here it is. Bendish, Ramita, on this book. Uh, to sum up this book in a manner of speaking is... 
basically, like that. Uh, because of the fact that Marvel kind of advertised this so much in their other books, like you get bits and pieces of what was going on in the book. The Phoenix is here. It's coming, and already it's being felt all over the galaxy. Uh, and of course, Sam Alexander Nova crash lands on Earth and basically tells him it's coming. And the Avengers are basically explaining to the president that this is coming. Uh, the Phoenix is coming. Meanwhile, in Utopia, basically, we see Cyclops just really, really putting a lot of uh, uh, pressure and training Hope Summers really hard. Like, he's he's pushing her really hard. He's he's really, really, really um, pushing, pushing her to the max, to the core. And, uh, she, you know, she's basically like, why are you pushing me so hard? You know, is this how, you know, is this how Xavier pushed you? And he's like, yeah, absolutely. And things like that. Magneto comes in and even Magneto says, even I wouldn't have pushed somebody like that hard, which is a shock. You know, that was a shock to me. Um, and one led to another, you know, of course, the famous scene, Cap's on the beach of Utopia. He comes down, basically, and tells Cyclops that the Phoenix is here. We got to put Hope in custody to protect her and keep like that. Cyclops saying, it's, if, she, if this, is, this is a mutant problem, we'll handle it. And Cap is basically saying, no, this is not a mutant problem. This is everybody's problem. The Phoenix is here to destroy. It's not what you think. See, Cyclops has this big notion that the Phoenix is going to rebirth the human, the mutant population. But even he should know better than this that it brings destruction along with it. Okay? And he's dealt with this before. Gene died, okay, because of this. And my big my big uh, view of this book was to see who throws the first punch and we see who it is. You know who it is? We all should know who it is. Cyclops. Cyclops throws the first blow. And he literally was trying to go for a kill shot with Cap. He literally tries to kill Cap with an optic blast. That was where I was like, okay, there you go. There it is, people. We get to see who starts the fight. It's, it's Cyclops X-Men. It, it's it's his X-Men. You know, and then it's kind of even... It, you know what? It even even puzzles me even more was when Emma is even telling Cyclops, look, it's up to Hope to decide. This is her choice, Cyclops, not yours. Well, it's not. You know, it's not. We, we got to protect her. And, you know, even, even Cap even said, you know, I gave you... You know, I just... I gave you a courtesy out of respect, leader to leader. But you don't want to see it that way? Fine. Avengers assemble. Helicarrier comes out of nowhere. Up on the Keller, you see the Avengers up there. There it is. So there you go, people. You wanted to know who threw the first uh, the first uh, shot in this war or so? Cyclops. So there you go. But it's there. Uh, but still, I want to know how... The Phoenix connects to Iron Fist. That's my main thing. All right. Um, Daredevil uh, 10.1. Another point one book. Uh, this is uh, Mark Wade. Uh, this is seems like this is this was just a, a book to uh, just touch on a little bit of, you know, um, Matt outside of his Daredevil persona. You know, really, we see Matt Murdock. He goes into a prison to to and talk to this person who was called Firestarter and why he came after him and things like that. But it mainly took main, the main story of this book is what he has. He has this hard drive, this mega drive that has that has like insignificant data on it that aim, the black specter, uh the um uh Hydra uh a lot of other terrorist groups in the Marvel Universe want, and he has it, and he's 
he's number one on their list because of that. Um, they even hired the black cat to steal it, but she didn't steal it. And that's basically what this is, you know. And Daredevil comes to them finally. He's like, oh, God, like, all right, look, you come after me, you come after me. You don't come after any of my personal friends like Foggy and people like that. I'm the one with the hard drive, but unfortunately, check and mate. I gave it to Reed Richards, and he's given it now to the authorities that need to have it. And it was that was kind of it. But it, it was an interesting story. Um, nothing really big, but... You know, Wade has still been doing a very good job with Daredevil, and it was just fun. It, it was just a standard issue, even though it's a point one book. But it's a standard issue. All right, next up, uh, Ultimate Comics Spider-Man number nine. Um, this issue picks up right where issue eight left off. Um, Miles had defeated this character known as the Ringer. Uh, the, uh, he's, he's tied up in the ringers, like these rings came on him and stopped him. A police officer comes up is like, you know, you're under, hold it. And basically he's talking to Miles, like, how old are you? Why are you doing this? You know, the whole nine yard. And, uh, Miles is like, I'm old enough, you know, yada, yada, yada. Also, we see his, his uncle, who is the, the more, this, the Ultimate Universe's Prowler dealing with this dr Mexican drug lord known as the Scorpion, who's come to New York to find his uncle, and now he feels that he needs to become the new kingpin of New York City. Uh, we also get to see that this guy called the Scorpion is no slouch. There's something with him. Either he's a mutant, or he could just take a lot of punishment, because his uncle does a lot of stuff to him, and it's just like, man, why won't this guy go down? Like, it's, it was seriously crazy. Um, Miles is trying to re lead a double life, you know, because he's going to this special school, and, you know, things like that, and he's talking to his friend Genki, and Genki, I think that's his friend's name. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's still playing up, you know, he's still learning, he's still progressing, but uh, it was fun. It was fun. Ultimate uh, Spider-Man number nine. It, fun book. Still good. This is probably the best out of the Ultimate lineup, in my opinion. Um, very good. All right. Uh, Venom number fifteen. Enter the Secret Avenger. Yeah. Uh, Rick Miranda, no slouch on this book either, baby. Uh. We pick up now, now officially, Flash is with the Secret Avengers. He's up on their, their, their space uh, headquarters. Beast and Hank are there talking about, you know, what to do with the, you know, the symbiote and everything like that. Flash is talking to Valkyrie about how, you know, she's a beautiful woman and everything like that. And Valkyrie's like playing with him like, you know, hmm, beautiful. I never even caught that. And she's like you know, waving her hair, and, she, and he's like, no, I don't, I didn't mean it like that, I, I have a girlfriend, and she's like, oh, now you're just, you're playing with me, and things like that, and she's, she knows what she's doing, she was just playing with him, um, and it's all about now the, the outcome of what Flash has been up to, he, he tells the Secret Avengers that, yes, I have enemies now, you know, jack-o'-lantern and and their you know crime master they know his identity they don't do what he says they'll hurt betty brant and his mother he comes and confront his mother peter parker's in this and things like that and he talks to peter about how he started drinking again you know all this um he was lying to his mother he lied to betty he broke up with her uh but also the main story in this is eddie brock is back and Eddie Brock has, he's been going on a, a hunting spree for all the other people who have symbiotes, offspring symbiotes from Venom, the Venom symbiote, symbiote. We see the female symbiote, which I thought was dead. She's in there. We see another one of the symbiotes that came, 
remember the story story arc separation and anxiety I, these are all the villains the all individuals that came out of that book and he's killing all of them he's going he's going hunting for all these people that has a symbiote and that was interesting i was like whoa why eddie why are you doing this and he just feels that the symbiotes are a disease and they need to be cleansed and stopped and things like that and he's just the guy to do it and then there's the big confrontation with Ed, uh, Flash and Betty and she basically breaks up with him and it's like you know basically she's like you know you don't get to talk this time I'm talking and you know she just lays it out of line on him and that was it until Eddie was like you know uh, Beast calls him and says we, we got a mission and he's like okay Mr. McCoy beam me up and you see him get beamed up to this the uh, Secret Avengers uh Shh, Secret Avengers. Uh, Secret Avengers at headquarters. Um, but this was good. Uh, it was really good. I can't wait to see what they continue this story. Um, uh, this is a much better story back on track with Venom instead of what they did with the Circle of Four story. I like the Circle of Four story. It was okay, but it really wasn't a Venom story. It, it felt too much like a Marvel team-up book instead of a Venom story. But this was truly much better. All right. And last Marvel book is none other than Wolverine and X-Men number eight. All right. This is the outcome of what happened to Wolverine. We saw the last issue. Wolverine had his legs broken. Somehow... When he and um, um, Quentin, Quentin Queer uh, were up in this the space uh, uh, casino, the bouncer of that was able to seriously break Wolverine's unbreakable bones, and and but we find out how they were to break it. So what happens? Archangel, Angel, Warren Worthington, who has completely lost his memory, he thinks he's really an angel from God, along with uh, Kid Gladiator, um, the reincarnation of Apocalypse, and all of them go to get the device they need. Also, and behold, the Hellfire Club decides to try to kill Beast, so they send Sabretooth. And there's a big space battle. Uh, in space, there's a battle with Beast and Sabretooth, which is really good. Uh, Aaron's does a very good job on his book. He is still doing a very good job. I'm hoping uh, my boy James Tanaka Khan 85 really enjoyed uh, what Aaron's has been doing on this. Uh, I am not a big fan of Chris Boccio's artwork, so forgive me, guys. I'm not really big on his artwork. Uh, to me... This is still a fun book, but I think it needs a new artist. Um, I can't. I'm not a big. I'm not a big Chris Baccio artist guy. Not really good. I'm, you know, kind of. It just his artwork looks more like. I'll say like an experience, like it's just it's choppy and I don't like it. I, I, I'm sorry, I just don't like it. Um, so that's all Marvel. Moving on to DC. Batwing, number eight. This is it, guys. Massacre is revealed. The enemy of the first seven issues of this pretty decent uh, book. I really have been enjoying Batwing. Um, I've really come to love the character. Uh, so, Massacre is in Gotham City. And it's basically, he's there to kill the last of the kingdom, members of the kingdom. The kingdom, as I explained before, is this African superhero team, kind of like the equivalent of the Justice League. And Massacre is out there to kill them for some reason. Uh, and he's after the last one called S Steelback. Um, 
there's a pr pretty decent fight between Batwing and Massacre, and David Batwing is able to remove, knock off, um, knock off Massacre's uh, mask, and it reveals who it is. I'm probably don't. I'm, I don't think a lot of people are reading Batwing, so I'm gonna spoil this, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, forgive me for spoiling. Massacre is none other than he thought it was the warlord that raised him after, and and the warlord that raised him and his brother to become those child soldiers. It's not. It turns out it's his brother. His brother. He thought his brother died. It's his brother. And he's his brother Isaac. And he's like, Isaac? Like, and he, and Isaac's saying, how do you know my name? You, you know, how did you know that? Who are you? Yada. And soon as he's about to say, it's me, date, blow up. The whole building that they were in blows up. Batman and them get him out. And he finds David is going to kill the person that kind of turned his brother into this guy massacre and Batman comes and says no we don't you know you don't do it you know no one dies tonight no more people dies tonight and you know it, there comes a big there's a big silent moment between Batwing and Batman and he's talking about how you know I don't think I can do this anymore Batman and too much death and he says Batman says to him I'm a prodigy of death I be I became who I am because of an incident of death you keep going on. You're a hero, David. Keep going on. Um, but yeah, we find out who Massacre is in this. And it turns out it's none other than his brother. Man, messed up. Uh, but he is going to try to find and save his brother. Because they didn't find his body in the wreckage. They didn't. Uh, Jude Winnick does a really good job on this. Uh, but, of course, now the next story is the big event, the Court of the Owls. Uh, all the Batman books are going to be dealing with that. All right. Uh, next up, Detective Comics number eight. Tony Daniels. And uh, their artist on this is San, Sandu Flore. Uh, the Scarecrow is in this book, and we see him again. And we also get to see the son of Hugo Strange in this book. Um, that's pretty much the gist of it. It looks like, you know, Scarecrow is taking somebody hostage. And Batman, he, Scarecrow's like, if you don't go do this, he's going to die. Doesn't end that way. Uh, Bruce is like, you know what? Um... Uh, he has to go save this. And when he finds out he's looking for the boy, he finds out that the boy is the real mastermind behind it. And that boy is Hugo Strange's son. It was good stuff. It was a good standalone issue. I enjoyed it. And then there's another there's another story, a story into it that deals with Two-Face. And that was good. I really enjoyed it. A detective, Tony Daniels, has still been doing a very good job with uh, with Detective Comics. You gotta love it. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. That, that's how I feel. He's been doing a very good job with it. Very good, indeed. All right, and a, a book that I know a lot of people have kind of fell off, but you know, I'm a collector, and um, Green Arrow, number eight, Unleash the Freaks of Nature. Um, Ann Nocenti, oh, no, no uh, that's her name. All right, the problem I have with this, I, I don't like the artwork too much because everybody has big eyes, and it's kind of like, almost like a an anime book in a way. Um, we get down to the bottom of who the Skylarks are and why they kidnapped Lord... Ollie to them, and things like that. In the meantime, since everybody believes Ollie is dead, the uh, his a person that works at Q Corp, Q Corp uh, Emerson, 
feels that, okay, now I can take over the whole company now because Ollie's not there. Um, and that's basically the whole gist of it. Um, we also can see an individual, the Skylark's uh, father, who is like this crazy environmentalist who's chain who's doing a lot of gene splicing. He's 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 basically delivering crimes against nature, basically. He's be, he's like a crazed Dr. Moreau. Okay? Think of that. That's how I can sum him up. Um and that's pretty much what it is. Uh that's pretty much all it is. But um another standalone issue, but it does tie into you know, they, a lot of his, the two uh, individuals that know him by, that know he is Green Arrow, they want to know how come the Justice League is not involved in it. Because in the next issue of Justice League, they do go see Green Arrow. Um, there are a lot of other members of the Justice League that are coming, guys, so you all should know that by now. But, um, yeah, Green Arrow, <laughs> it's it's there, guys. That's that's the way to sum it up. If you are a Green Lantern fan, a green, a green, I mean Green Arrow, excuse me, um, stick with it, um, like me. But if, but I'm not forcing you to. If you feel like you want to, this creative team sucking, and you'll wait to maybe they'll leave or so, that's that's your problem. No, no problem, no problem at all, no problem. <laughs> all right, move on to. Uh, JLI, Justice League International. Um, Dan Jurgens does a good job in this, as always. Batwing actually is in this book. And Batwing, it's shown in this book, Batwing knows Vixen. He pays her a visit in the hospital. As you all know, there was an explosion. Uh, a lot of the members of the JLI were injured. One of them died. Um... Uh, what's his name? Uh, Rocket Red, Red Rocket, Rocket Red. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Correct me, guys, please. Uh, he died, and Booster is out to find the people responsible, and he does. He finds the guy called Light Weaver, uh, and we also see the guy called Breakdown, who is like the head ringmaster. Um, but yeah, Batwing's in this to help out, and he's he kind of talks about Booster like you know he's got a weird personality and things like that. Uh, as well as Guy is still a little bit upset at, you know, what's going on with, you know, he's a little upset over the fact that, you know, uh, Ice is in the hospital, he can't do anything about it, and then you have those people from the UN, like one of the UN de delegates, the Chinese uh, de delegate, she's like, you know, you guys now are under my jurisdiction, you know, they shut down the team, but Booster's like, you know what, even if we're not under UN authority, we're still going to find out who did this. That's what we do. Jurgens writes Booster really well in this. He knows how to write Booster. Um, and break down the bad guy in this. Man, he looks badass. I got to admit, it, he looks creepy, but badass. I really enjoyed his look. Indeed. And it was a good, and is Batwing joining the JLI? Maybe. It, that's what it looks like to me. Um, it would be better than Batman joining because I think they don't need to be putting Batman on every book. That's me. Yeah, I said it, people. Batman does not need to be in every book. Yeah, I said it. What you going to do about it? You want to fight? I'm ready. Let's go. You know? <laughs> um, that's to all you Batman nutty huggers out there. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, um, Red Lantern number eight, uh, Mill Peter Milligan. No Ed Benz on this. I was a little disappointed because that's one of my favorite arts, and his art artwork works well. Bottom line, Rancor is on the planet uh, where the Red Lanterns are. We find out the individual who stabbed Atrostis and what they plan to do and things like that. And it's getting bad. Uh, the individuals, which I don't want to spoil too much, you see what they do on to 
a certain power source of the Red Lanterns, and it leaves you with a, a like, holy shit. Like, is this the end of the Red Lanterns? That's basically this. all this book is really, like, a holy shit moment. Like, okay, is this it? Are they ending it or not? What What's going to happen now? It leaves so many questions now. It's like, what is going to happen? What are we going to do? Yada, yada. You know, it's so much to really deal into, but it was really good. Peter Melgen does a really good job. And Rancor, the, the first human earthling Red, uh, Red Lantern, is still confused. He's still trying to fight off the rage and everything like that. Uh, but yeah, it was good, nonetheless. And last but not least, yeah, guys, the final issue. Um, static. Static Shock number eight. I can literally say I saw this book to the end. The last issue. Secrets of the Past Revealed. Uh, Mark uh, Bernardin, Scott McDowell, Andy Owens on this. Basically, Static Virgil sits down with a person that I don't think any of us wants to... A superhero, no superhero wants to sit down with. A psychiatrist, a shrink. And this shrink is trying to get really in depth into Virgil. Like, you know, Vir she knows Virgil's an A plus student, but he's late to school all the time, sometimes three times out of a week. You know, she's starting to think that his parents are are beating him and things like that. And, you know, it's really getting crazy. And that's all this book was. Um, not a lot of action, just backstory on on static. That's all. He's telling the story of how he became static. He's not telling her that, but you see it in the way he's telling it. This is how he's telling it. Um, but, yes, guys, this is the end of static. It's a shame because, personally, with me, DC, you could have did a better job with static. Um, you could have had a better creative team on this book. Once uh, Rosam left the book, after one issue, I knew there was going to be problems. And this is one of the books that's getting canceled. It got canceled. And, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a little disappointed. You know, I'm very much disappointed, guys, about that. You know, Static, I love Static. I love Static even before the cartoon series. I knew about Static even before that. I was reading the Milestone comic. You know, Mr. Dwayne McDuffie, you know, did a very good job with Static. You know, I fell in love with a lot of the characters. He did Hardware, Icon, Rocket. You name all those characters, I was loving them. Static was among them. And when I heard DC was bringing him back, put him in, you know, they brought before the 52, the new 52 universe, they brought him, put him on the Teen Titans. I loved him on the Titans. And then, after that, they changed the team. He was gone. 52 Universe started. We saw that he was getting his own series. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm on board. And it went downhill from there. And I'm a little, I'm very disappointed in DC for not giving him more of a chance. Not putting better creative teams on it. If it was a point of, well, we don't know if somebody, we can live up to what Mr. McDuffie did with him. That's bullshit. That's BS right there, because there are good writers out there that probably would have did a very good job with Virgil. Um, bottom line, I'm hoping this isn't the last we see of him. I'm hoping he joins the Titans or something. At least keep him around, because we know, because I know, we know that another book that I'm reading, Mr. Terrific, his book is ending, but he's still going to be around in the Earth 2 book. So I'm hoping Static is still around somewhere or the other. And it pisses me off. And I'm not going to let Hurricane Chris come out, but that's another side of guys you don't want to see. But other than that, you know, I really felt that I'm very disappointed in you, DC. You could have, you know, really did a very good, better job with him. 
better creative team, you name it, you know, but you kind of, you epic fail, in my opinion, a fail, but I stuck around to see the book to the end. I did it. There you have it. But other than that, I gave my little rant, guys, but other than that, that's all I have for this week. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and <laughs> ran on 40 minutes, uh, 40 minutes. That's good enough for me. Uh, as always guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, as always, like I said, everything, all the links, everything, shout out again, you know, shout out channel, you know, where I got this shirt, you know, everything will be in the description if you want to know where it is. And as always, this is Mount Vernon Kid saying peace, one love, stay tuned, keep it real. As always, guys, to my fellow comic geeks and everybody out there, I'll see you later. Oh, and one more thing. Sensei, as always, y'all take care.